Hi all. Right, welcome to Dede at Tarawa by the main man himself, John Butterfield, uh, published by Decision Games. Um, now, I think this was probably my first uh, John Butterfield game uh, and probably one of my first war games. I, I, I tend to feel like I say that when I, on quite a few games. It's one of, one of my first, yeah. Because uh, I haven't been in the hobby that long, I don't know, eight, eight years or so, something like that. I haven't been in the hobby that long. And then I uh, found out about Solitaire games and in particular some Solitaire War games. And, uh, you know, the, these are some of the best. The first three DD at games by John Butterfield, uh, Omaha Beach, Tarawa and Pelwu. Just brilliant. They're, <laughs> they're really good. Uh, complex affairs, yes, quite hard to play. Um, yeah, tough, some tough rules, but that, that's that's all what I want, and uh, and completely solitaire. You know, not not try to play two sides by yourself and all that, which doesn't work for me. Um, so I've had this game, well, I suppose, yeah, for quite a while. Um, I think I got it second hand as well. Now this is probably. Whew, because it's got a mounted map now. I don't have the mounted map. Um, I think all I think they released them all a new version, didn't they? Um, so I've still got the paper map, but I've got Plexi, and that's fine. I, I I'm fine with that. Um, uh, so that yeah. So this is the first one I tried, and I loved it. I couldn't. I, I think I would probably theater wise. I think when I first looked into this, I would have liked to have got Omaha Beach because I think it was probably the theater I was more more interested in um, couldn't get a hold of that at the time so got this and uh, wow I, was just, I just thought it was amazing great game so um, and uh, I've done a play through the DD at Omaha Beach and uh, so I I was always going to do another a play through of this and I will do a play through at Pebble at some point now um, I did think about waiting until next week because this is actually an anniversary coming up uh, I'm recording this on the 9th of November uh, 2043, which is almost 80 years since it happened. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I had the chance to start it now, probably if I'd left it till, I know it'd be nice to have had it out on the actual day, but, um, uh, so I'm going to play the full, uh, scenario, the two, uh, was it, is it two, two days at hell, two days in hell? That was, that's what it's called, isn't it? Two Days in Hell, yeah, covers the first two days of the invasion, uh, turns one to thirty. Playing time is seven hours. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Um, maybe for some, uh, but certainly not for me. And, uh, well, I'm trying to do a record on it. Yeah, this will be multiple hours long. Um, now, I need to watch, because uh, when I played uh, Tita Omaha, we had to do a take two, um, because I um, messed up what I thought my victory conditions to continue with the game, because it's somewhere in Tarawa, I think, and Pell, you reach a stage where you move on to the second half of the game, but you've got to have achieved a certain uh, amount of victory points by then. And I messed it up playing Omaha, because I thought it was... I can't remember point numbers now. I thought it was a certain amount of points, and it wasn't. It was a certain amount. And I could have probably got them, but... Why I didn't go and look up the rules at the time and find out for sure, as I ended up take, doing a take two. So, um, well, if we do do a take two, it'll be because I've been slaughtered rather than uh, having messed up reading the victory conditions. Now, that's quite possible because I'm sure a lot of you have played this game and not been able to reach the, the victory points to carry on with the game. And I'm sure a lot of you have done what I've done also and thought, to hell with it. I'm just moving on anyway. I've not re I've not achieved the victory points, but I want to play the next half of the game because it to totally changes up. It's like, you know, they're, they're all similar games. They use, uh, and it is in sort of two halves, the first half of the game, and then it becomes more complex when you introduce all the, the lettered actions and that for it. Um, so, um, yeah, so looking forward to doing this. Um, yeah. So I, I did think, I was going to set it all up and then I thought, well, why not just uh, press record and we'll uh, maybe go through the setup. 
Um, yeah, just uh, this, this maybe not. It's maybe not that complex, really. Now, obviously, I've got. I mean, the rules I'll have as the rule book. Uh, does it tell you? I've see. There's nothing in there that tells you, is there? I mean, I will have the other rules on my tablet. Um, however, I've got this along with um, the Arata. Now, this Arata is dated um, uh, 2016. So, again, <laughs> seven years ago. Um, so, uh, but that's the latest thing. And it was a Arata by John Butterfield himself that he compiled this. I think he'd done three sets of Arata. Uh, one in... One in 2015. I don't know what the first one might have been. But this is the latest one, right? And um, this wasn't just a rata that he, he, he brought out. He also brought out some... Um, it was... It, well, I think a lot of these games are... I've not, I've not won the game. I've not won any of these DDR games. But that's not what it's about, in my opinion. But in my playthrough... Well, that's me giving spoilers now. <laughs> if you're going to go and watch my... Omaha Beats plays you. But I do play it right to the end. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd done all right. Um, I think near the end, uh, I, I realised that I was getting... I was dilly-dallying and I should have been getting things off the map. So maybe I'll have uh, more... You know, I'll be thinking more about that. I'm not so sure if the if it's getting off the map on this one or not. I don't think it is, actually. I think it's... Uh, anyway, this one's meant to be harder, and Pelalu is probably meant to be the hardest, I think, but... Or is it the way about? It's one of the two. But anyway, John Butterfield did change up his uh, the victory conditions in this. I want to say he maybe done the same in... Or am, am I thinking of Pelalu here? Let's see what we've got. Yeah, maybe I am thinking of Pelalu. Uh let me see, does it tell you anything here or no? Anyway, the, I'm going to use these, clearly. Uh, maybe maybe it was Pelo. He changed the victory conditions. Uh, because it was like, I think it was impossible. Yeah, as Pelo, I'm thinking about. There was some changes made to the victory conditions because he had People were saying it was too hard to, to win. And I'm saying impossible. I mean, I dare say you could, uh, if you were smart enough, look through the deck of cards and pick each card that you wanted for, you know, play with the deck face up and just look and pick a card that you wanted. Uh, <laughs> my guess would be that would be the a, a possible way of it. Well, I dare say that would be it you would be able to win it if you could actually pick any card there. But as, as, I mean, they're generally thought of as very hard to win these games anyway. And if, I want to say they go in that sort of order. Omaha is, is winnable. Um, this one's sort of like pretty difficult. <laughs> very difficult to me. And I think Pelu was classed as like too difficult. And uh, and I think that's why he adjusted the, the conditions. But whether any of these things have been adjusted to make things slightly easier as well, I don't know. They look like they're just clarifications and the like. Um, but, um, yeah, but I will have these uh, at hand. Now, it says they are, uh, if they, these corrections will be incorporated in the 2017 second printing. Um, so, I, I guess if you've got the game, if you're buying the game new now, the, you're going to have all this. Um, but, uh, well, I don't, this must be not the second printing of the 2017. There's no dates or anything that like. I wish they had that in the rule book, you know. Don't know if it's there in the box, but there's nothing to say here, is there? What version it is or anything. Um, so I did think, uh, have, let's have a look at the optional rules. Um, but there's nothing really big there. I mean, there's just uh, his optional rule. Uh, right, I wondered where my glare was going to come in. Uh, so hang on. Right, that looks to be a bit better. Just move the camera a bit, just see if I was catching it. So, um, that should be fine. Uh, and then, yeah, optional rules. We've got Hawkins Raid. Um, 1st Battalion, 8th Marines landing options. And then Admiral Shiba Shibasaki survives. Um, so there are three, there's, there's three optional rules. I don't think, I'm, I'm not going to play them. I looked at them and I don't think any of them are going to help me. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, I don't want to make things any harder than the, than they already are going to be for me. I dare say some of the I've maybe played when I might say because this one brings in some extra units, but it means he doesn't die, and uh, which is uh, I think that makes things bad for you as well. This one, this one is a pre-raid thing, which you can end up with. Yeah, there's there it's up there. Look, you can have four different outcomes. Is it? Depending on what cards that you draw at the beginning, um, you could end up with a worse situation, or you could end up with a slightly better situation. But I'd rather not gamble with that. And then this one now is you to land the units in a different bit, doesn't it? Uh, so they're going to land in R1, R2, R3, rather than up the side there when they come in on turn 17, is it? Um, uh, no, I thought they came in later. Or is that the other ones that come in later? There's, there's stuff that comes in on the 28th as well. 28th game turn. And stuff that comes in the seventeenth. But anyway, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play with any of them. I think things are gonna be hard enough. So um yeah. So you'll see there's the map. Um it looks a bit darker over here, but I have I have been here before. This is me back on my other table and I've not got a light at this side. But anytime I've watched back on it, it's it's fine. It's generally fine. Uh this is at night obviously. During the day, it'll be brighter here because the window's over this side. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, so I, I'm not saying anything up, like I say. Well, I've mixed the deck up and uh, that's the first thing I've done. Now you'll see I've got these charts here at the side as well. These are all under the plexi as well, which is quite nice. And um, yeah, I've used these in the past. They're on, they're on BGG. I can't, sorry. Can't give praise to whoever who's done them, but um, they're there. I mean, there's some more charts to like this. The back of the rule book here is some of the stuff for well, that's that one there, isn't it? Well, that's yeah, the coastal land then land. You can see coastal and then land. So I've got them there, and uh, yeah, these other ones. Uh, there are charts. I mean, I've I've got there are charts there. That got that one in the back of the rule book, and then. You know, you've got that's this one up here, isn't it? Sorry, the one up the top there, giving you that, and uh, some of the other things there. But uh, I quite like the little charts and put them down. Uh, I want to say because I had them for uh, Didi at Omaha as well. Um, and I think these are okay. I think these are a uh, You know, I don't think there's any issues with them. But we've all double checked things, you know. If you've watched any of my stuff, I, I try to be very careful and make sure and double check and go and ask questions and annoy people and that to get things right. Um, now I did. I know when I previously played that, I used this. This was done. Now we might have. We might be able to give the praise to the creator of this. Go Edgar Gallego there. So um, whether he done this, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it was him that done this uh, Tarawa flip book. And I uh, just go from page to page going through the, each step. Um I have used this in the past and uh, I might start off just by using it probably off camera. I don't think I'll bring it out. I, I did think about I could have put it in a folder and made it a bit smarter and brought it out and we could have had a look at it together, but um I, I might I, I think I'll probably will have this at the side of me. I'll uh, definitely have the rule book, and the good thing is I can put the rule book here, open it up, we can reference some rules. Um, I don't need to see. I can just move this to look at the charts when we need to, and um, yeah. So, okay, yeah. So that's first part of my video. I'll just be, I'm just going to set things up, um, whether I might start the first landing phase or whatever. I don't have an awful lot of time at the moment, but I just wanted to get this kicked off so that I was then. Um, able to come back and sit down and do stuff. So let's let's get it set up anyway. So setting up for play. Um where the map. Yeah. Let's choose a scenario. Well we're gonna play we're not playing the first waves, we're playing two days in hell. So um 
Here we are. Cover the first two turns of the invasions. Uh, of the invasion. Turns 1 to 30. Playing time is 7 hours. Like I say, uh, this will be more than 7 hours. Um, for sure. Uh, and then after you played the game through a few times, you may wish to explore the optional rules in section 21. But I don't think I'll do that. Not for this playthrough. I know I did add the... The tanks part to Omaha Beach uh, when I done the playthrough and that was kind of Martin talked talked to me into that <laughs> that um, but um, that was a bit more interesting. I, I, I again I, I don't feel like reading any of these uh, optional rules, but I've not tried them, so who knows? It might be if if this video gets out quick enough and. If you think I should play with any of the three optional rules, the thing is, I think the first one you need to deal. Well, the one there's one you need to deal with right away before you even set things up, isn't there? Or as you're setting things up, my bad. But anyway, probably I'm ha I'm happy to play with it as is. Uh, so set up except the twenty first of November, which is the second day one, uh, as follows. So we're good to that. Shuffle the deck, right? That's the one thing I have done, right? Japanese units. So we're going to mix together the 28 Japanese units marked C for coastal face down. Randomly place a coastal unit face down in each hex on the map. Marked with an artillery class L, M or H. Uh, white, medium or heavy. Or with a blue C. Um, so that's where we're going to put these 28 units marked uh, with a C for coastal. Alright, so there are the 28... And they're marked with a C, and it's a C on the right-hand side there. Um, don't be confused with uh, the little CC on that one, which is down the left-hand corner. But um, it, it's any ones that have the C on the right-hand side. So there's 28 of them there. Um, and I'm going to shuffle them up, and then we're going to start placing them. So I'll turn them over and shuffle them up. Right, so that's them all shuffled up. So I'm going to place all of these on anything that's got an L, M, or an H. So you can see an M there, an M there, and uh, there's an L. Uh, the H's are maybe further along here, are they? There's an H along there, an M. Uh, or, or the ones that have the C as well, a blue C. So that's another one there that's got the C. So although they're not artillery positions, which is what the L, M, N, H are, these are Cs, these are Cs. So I'm going to place all the units on these uh, face down, you know, just like this. So I'll be back after I've done all that. Okay, there we go. So there's all the coastal units placed and their positions. Right. Okay. So next we have to mix together the three Japanese armour units face down. So we'll get these ready. Right. And that's these three here. We're going to turn them over. Mix them about. Okay, I mean I didn't even look at them. I just turned them over. Uh, and then we're going to drop the... Uh, sorry. Draw the top card from the deck and refer to the three position colours on the card. We're going to place the three armor units in the position hexes on the map um, with an armor symbol and matching the colors on the card. Then we're going to flip each armor unit to its revealed side and place a disrupted marker on each armor unit. And then we're going to discard the card. So, for example, if you draw a card showing position colors of orange, red, and blue, you would place armor units in hexes 1830, 1332, and 1529, each on its revealed side with a disrupted marker. Right, so there's our three armored units. I'm going to draw a card and see what we get. So we're getting, uh, it's the colors, isn't it? So it's purple. So we're looking for the purple with the armor symbol. Um, right. Uh, so, so the, the armour symbol is the, that's the same as the previous game, but I suppose if you've not watched this, see that red, the red with a sort of, what is that? It's not an oval, is it? It's maybe got a different, it's maybe got a name, that kind of shape. Um, it's kind of an oval, wasn't it? <laughs> right, we're looking for the purple uh, one of them. So actually that's it there, isn't it? It's that one there. Yeah, so we're going to place um, one of the tanks on there. 
And then we're going to look for the next colours, green and then brown. So green and brown. Uh, well, there's a green one right there. And then the brown one is... I'm struggling to see it. Ah, there he is. Yeah. So that goes in there. So these now flip, we flip them face up, don't we? Flip each armor unit to its revealed side and place a disrupted marker on each armor unit. So that one's going to be there. And the, the colours on that are to do with its... Uh, oh, you know what? Can't remember. We'll find out. <laughs> so that's the state of the three... Uh, the three tank units. Um, we are going to disrupt them though. So... We're going to get uh, disrupted markers on each of these... Tanks. These were, uh, they're not very well clipped. These were clipped back in the day when I didn't have one of the gadgets. <laughs> so I had to try and uh, do it sort of by hand. Um, probably, so they're probably not that great. Why are you moving about so much? Right. Okay, so, and then we discard this card. Uh, is there a space for? There's not, is there? It's not a discard. So I think that's a perfect space there for it, just to the left of the deck um, for that. Okay, so then moving on. So then we mix together the... Oops, sorry. We mix together the remaining 15 Japanese units face down. Randomly place 11 of these units face down in position hexes marked I for inland, but not in positions now occupied by tank units. Place the remaining four units in the Japanese reserve box. Okay. So there's the 15 units, right? I'll let you have a quick look and then we'll shuffle them up uh, on the other side. Right, so we have to place um, 11 of them on the position hex is marked I for inland. So I can probably do this. So I'm just going to randomly pick one as we go. Uh, I for inland, but not ones like, see that has got an I in it with the tank. So that's not going to apply. There's one there. So I'm going to chuck one of these there and then moving along two three and i'll finish the rest okay right and that leaves us with four and they're going to go that's me placing them on the eyes there's no eyes available now and uh they four go in the the japanese reserve box which will be up here somewhere so there we go japanese reserve unit so i'll put them in there there we go. Got to be very careful with these units. Uh, these counters are quite thin and there's a tendency to easily flip over. Um, I think I've done an accident or two before with DD at Omaha. Um, I want to say these are maybe slightly better counters than the Omaha ones, but they're still a bit... They're, they're easily flipped over if you happen to mess about with them too much. So, maybe be careful. Okay, next. Uh, Japanese depth markers. So we're going to separate and match together the three types. The three types of depth markers face down. You've got coastal, inland, and armor. And we're going to place the coastal and inland markers in the matching depth marker on the map. We're going to place each armor depth marker under a Japanese armor unit on the map face down. Now, you know what? I'm just going to do the one first because there's only three of them. Um, I mean, they were turned that way anyway. So that's the face down now they stay face down so i'm just going to place each one of the armor depth markers under a japanese armor unit on the map and keep it face down so like that's going to go in here underneath that that's still going to be disrupted and then i'll do that with the other two as well Right, so here's the coastal depth markers i was turning them over there but just so you can see some of them what they what they do. Um, I probably <laughs> I probably should study these carefully so that I'm uh, prepared for what all the possibilities are. Now there was some, yeah, I don't think my counters came out that well. There's some of them, where can we see? I don't really look at them. Some of them are a bit, weren't cut properly, I think. 
So um, I don't want to start studying them because then I might start saying, right, well, I know what that one might be, you know. Um, you can also see these, some of these are a bit, yeah, you can see the colour. If you can see that, the colour difference is a wee bit off. That's kind of ready and it's a darker there. And there's some of them are like that. But I don't want to start studying them because, like I say, then, then you might see, see, there's one flipped over. They're so easy to flip over these. So, um... Yeah, I don't want really to do that. So, um, well, we're just piling these up, aren't we? Separately mixed them, face down, coastal in, place the coastal and inland markers in the matching depth marker box on the map, place each armour depth marker on the Japanese armour unit on the map face down. Yeah, so I've done the three Japanese armour units, uh, depth markers, and now we're just going to, I'm just going to pile these up into this box here. So I'll maybe make two or three piles rather than have a big stack. Alright, so that's it. I've just put two stacks. I've got a stack of 10 and a stack of 11, so hopefully that's right. 21 seems a bit of an odd number, but I don't think it gives you the exact breakdown of how many of these there are in these, is there? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it just tells you how many pieces there are, uh, whatever. Right, so that's the coastal ones. And these are the inland ones. I've, I've turned them over there just to get an idea. I've seen a lot of flanking and CCs there. So I'll flip them over and start shuffling them. Yeah, so that's the same. So I don't think there's quite as many of these. So I'll put um, a couple of stacks and they obviously go in that other box up there. Okay, I count 19 of them. So another kind of odd number. <laughs> um, but it's not that I could say that maybe that should be 20 and that should be 20 because they're clearly different markers, you know. Um, well, if they should be 20 each, then, because um, we've got 21 there and 19 there, so. Uh, but you can see, I couldn't have made, mixed it up. They're white and red, so. Uh, right, that's that, but. Right, now to our side of things. Um, so, US units. Place, place each of the 12 US units marked in or on turn 1 and beach approach hex A, B or C for the beach listed on the unit. Up to two units may be placed in each hex. Orient the units so they face in the direction indicated by the arrow in its hex. Beach approach hex D is not available during game setup. So A, B and um, C. And then after that we're going to place the hero marker for Major Ryan on any infantry unit in a beach red 1 approach hex. This marker does not count toward the limit of two units per hex. Um... Then we're going to place the nine LVT units in the LVT in the available LVT box. So I just noticed that box is going to be kind of annoying. Because that's going to be where I want to put the rule book. Uh, I might find myself finding a better place for them. Mind you, this is where your wasp box is as well, Grant. Right, okay. Uh, anyway. And then place all other US units marked with a turn of entry in the corresponding space on the turn track. Place units marked R, D, C, E and D plus 2 aside. Um, okay, so let's look at the 12 US units marked in on turn 1 first. Okay, so there's the 12 units. That does feel quite dark along here, doesn't it? I'm sure the time before when I looked on the, uh, the actual recording and it, and it was fine. Um, well, this is just set up. I'll, I'm probably just going to... It looks like this is just going to be a short, well, I say a short part, yeah, probably another 10 minutes or so, and I'll just leave that at that, and I can look back on it and just make sure everything's okay, and I can, I can I'll put a comment there, that it is just an introduction, if you want to see some gameplay, then move on to, you know, some of you might not be interested in this part. Right, so we've got to set these up, and uh, these are, these are all going in, in turn one, uh, these are for R1, I've actually got them in the wrong place, because R1's along here. And that's R2 and that's R3. So, uh, these units for R1, uh, right. Okay, and don't don't be watching this video looking for any strat great strategies or tips on how to um, win at this game. Uh, not going to happen here. Uh, I just play this for fun. And, uh, yeah, I put, I put thought in there. I try to do my best. And um, I sometimes probably come up with some good things. My main purpose is always, as always, is to get, is to play by the rules. 
Um, and that's that's a biggie for me. I don't want to make blunders. But uh, with, with these complex games, they can happen. They can happen. I mean, that, this isn't... Well, I think it is. I still think it's a complex war game. Well, I'm looking across there. 3.73... 3.73 so yeah there's 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 much more complex than that that reached the 4 mark isn't there war game wise but right so these are all going in R1 we can place 2 uh, up to 2 units in a hex uh, you know what like, like I say it, it's been a long time since, since I've had a shot of this game as well so let's go with um uh Let's go with that and there, and then I think I'm tempted to stack these. Not sure why, but um, or maybe we should maybe we should do it that way. Put them in the middle. They're the engineer unit, something. Yeah, what? Well, let's kind of go with that. And uh, these are the ones that um. Place the hero marker for Major Ryan on any infantry unit, Beach Red 1, Approach Hex. So that is Beach Red 1. So let's get Major Ryan. He is, he is our first hero. Now there's eight, eight heroes in the game, but you get to start this guy. So any infantry unit... Uh, I want to say the engineer units are classed as infantry, but... I don't think that's where we want to put it. So do we go with that one or that one? Um... Let's go, uh, I don't know, I'm just looking where they're going to land, I remember the land, it's, I think the land in this is great, but then, like I say, this was the first D-Day act game that I played, so, uh, that was before Omaha, and I think, some folk maybe think this is, I want to say this, this maybe could be a bit brutal, a bit too brutal, the land in this, uh, I might be wrong, maybe some, maybe the other ones are. It's just as bad, right? We'll put the hero on that one then. Let's go with that. And they're all facing that arrow direction. So that's the way the direction that they head in. So then we've got uh, the ones for... Uh, no, actually, we've got a choice here, haven't we? Or do we? No, that is that when they, is that if they shift? I think we've got a point in that direction, haven't we? And there are twos. Is that right? Or can I point them that way? There's a smaller arrow there, and I'm trying to... Uh, yeah. I want to say if that's... If they shift... What is it? Okay, what's the... It's not the drift one. Pivot! That's it. Pivot. So these can pivot. So we can have them like that to start with. But if they get the pivot result, they go like that, and then they start... They go in that way. Um, so that can be brutal. <laughs> Uh, so I think we'll go the same again put the two engineer units together like that and then we'll have that guy that way and that guy that way and I, I think they've got to point that way and if they get the pivot they go that way but you notice there's no arrows on these other ones so I want to say maybe it's only the middle there are two that can pivot uh, I could be wrong uh, I'm not going to be like you know all the rules on top of my head here. Uh, it's been a long time since I played this game as well. Um, uh, I'm going to be studying the rules as we go. Um, and what I should do is probably have a, a read through these, uh, the rata to try and let that sink in. So when I come across a rule, hopefully the rata will kick in and uh, and deal with it. And then, right, so R3, they've only got one base in. Um... I think I'm just going to go with the same, put these in the middle again. And uh, that guy's going to go there, that guy's going to go there. So that's going to be our setup. Uh, the LVT units. Right. Yeah, it's just, this is where I want to put the rule book. I mean, I could have the rule book along there, but I kind of like the rule book along here. <laughs> just a bit closer in there. Um, but I'll start off by putting them in there. So there's uh, 12, is there? How many? Does it tell you there? Nine. Nine LVTs. So these all go in here. Um, yeah, it's kind of annoying. I wish... 
<laughs> they were across the other side. But this is the lost box as well, so... Because I can see myself wanting to bring the rule book across here and knocking these down. We're, we're going to put these to use and some of them aren't going to survive as well, so... I'll leave them there just now and we'll, I'll just stretch across for the moment, but I might change that up a little bit. Um, yeah, we've done the hero, done that. So place all other US units marked with a ton of entry in the corresponding space of the turn track. Place units marked RDC, E and D plus 2 aside. Okay. Right, so we have units. There's the turn track up there. And we have units arriving and turn 2. Um, turn 3. It's a couple of headquarters. And then turn four, there's a couple of tanks. Three tanks. Turn uh, six, so nothing on turn five. We jump to turn six. a big, big stack in there. And then, but then after that, you're turn 17 and turn 28. So that's how it goes. Um, okay, so they... Oh, knock them all down, Grant. Right, so they all go there. Now, I've got my, I've set out my, these are the uh, the ones that I've got RDC, and basically they replace the units once they take, uh, the infantry units are four steps, so the backside of them is a three step, then you take the replacement counter for them, two step, one step, and then they're eliminated. So I've set these out in a sort of, so I can, you know, uh, A, A1, B1, C1, D1, and then, it's all a bit of a mixture, but I'll, I'll be able to go there and directly find it rather than hunting through uh, some mixed up counters. And the other ones, the other ones with E on it, and I've just left them in the box. Uh, see, that's a D plus two, but that's only used if I played the optional rule. This one has an E on it, which might come into, come into things as an event. Uh, this is artillery, I think. And uh, I think that comes in as an event. Uh, so they're just set aside in the box, so that's fine. Right, and then almost done, it says markers. Place a turn marker in the first space of the time track and the phase marker in the first space of the card track. So the turn marker goes up to turn one. And then the phase marker, well, it's just having a, it just says in the card track, doesn't it? It's not really a spot for it, but... I think we all might have remember putting it down below, but uh, whether I might keep this, use this or not, yeah, this is not a bat, so we've got US, yeah, the red bit's the extended game, the top bit's that, so that's where we're starting first anyway, US o uh, amphibious operation phase, and then I may move that phase marker along, I dare say I'll probably not do that, and then uh, hopefully be able to do it without that. Okay, uh, and then finally, what we got over the other page? Yeah, I'm gonna have to move that, it's too far along to the left for me. So I'll probably move the LVT somewhere, I'll maybe create some wee stack somewhere. Um, place the Japanese eye action marker face down in the turn 11 space of the Japanese allowed actions track. And then we mix the other four Japanese action markers face down Place each face down randomly on the Japanese allowed action track in the four boxes marked with turn numbers. Then we place the Admiral Shibas Shibasaki marker in the Admiral Shibasaki box. Command side up. Place all other markers aside and then we're ready for a sequence of play. Alright, so there's all alert actions. We do take the I1 out. And um, I'm not quite sure why it. It plays for, oh, I suppose it plays face down because it's not in operation yet. It's not going to come in until turn 11. So it goes face down, but as the eye. And then the other four are going to go randomly. One, two, three, four. And they'll appear on... That's why you get some nice variation in how it works. So I'm going to flip these over. And... Actually, I'm not going to... Because you, you, be, you might be watching that, sir. So... And you'll know what's what's going to come. Uh, I've not got a clue, but I'm going to shuffle them a bit more off camera. And that wasn't to set them up in a way that I know what they are, because what would be the point in that? 
And not only that, I could just as easily <laughs> look at them when I've placed them. So that's going in uh, turn three. That one's going in turn five. Randomly selecting them. That one's going in turn seven. And the last one's going in turn nine. Carefully not turning them over. Right, and then Admiral Shib Sh Shibazaki is in command. And uh, if he happens to get killed, because he was actually killed in the battle... Um, and that's why you've got that optional rule again about him not being killed. There's not a chance of him being killed. So, But I think it brings bad because when you draw the event and he's in play, I think bad things happen. <laughs> oh, lots of bad things happen in this game, as as they do in all the DDI games, don't they? It's all bad. None of it's good. <laughs> well, there's a little bit about it. Right, and then I've got my three... Uh, you get three actions per turn in this game, I think. And there is a fourth US action marker. Uh, yeah, that's what I've got set aside there. That's my three US action markers. Uh, I think there's one set aside cause in case you get the... One of the good events that gives you an extra action. Okay, I think uh, that's where I'll leave it for now. Um, and... Uh, we won't have any more time tonight, I don't think. Yeah, I'm going to have to move then. What I'm, what I think I'll do is, I think I'll just pile these over, over this other side here, beside the stuff. I don't think it matters. It's just, it'll allow me to use the rule book a bit better. And what I'll do also for the losses, I'll create a little area where I'll put the losses over there somewhere as well. Uh, just remember to keep an eye on them because... Uh, again, the whole losses thing could be part of me uh, being able to carry on. That's one thing I need to look at as well. Find out the condition to carry on in the extended game grant. It just lets me bring the rule book in there a bit further. Because we... Well, I'm not saying we don't need this. We do. Um, and I will look at this. But I can move it out of the way. If there's counters there, you can see that I can't move that over. And whatever. You know. So, okay. Right. Okay, I'll leave it for now with that, and um, like I say, I will put a little comment in the header of this, but uh, I'll try and release this quite quick, just to let you know that this is, play through this is coming along, if it's something that interests you. Um, I'm still still playing uh, Carrier Battle Philippine Sea, it is over there on my other table, uh, I did record a bit of it earlier, um, and I'm not, it's, it's not that I go sort of like, oh right, it's this is not doing it for me anymore. But it was such a change in the game where there was so much happening and I was like, oh, panicking about, like, we're going to get this, that, and the next thing done. And then everything seemed to die away. But I think the game's intended that way. I've said that so much over the, over the other table, so I, I shouldn't need to go into that more. But I'm determined I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish the game. So I'm going to divide my time between a little bit of this and finishing that off. And then once that is finished off, um, I can concentrate fully on this. However, at Cara Battlefield PC, it looks a great game. And uh, I want to explore that a bit more and possibly do another playthrough of that. Using some either optional rules or maybe playing one of the other scenarios that um, I find might be more challenging. However, I maybe need to find out what my results are going to be first before I start thinking that way because it could turn out when I add everything up at the end that um, it's not as uh, <laughs> rosy as I thought you know right okay I will get away from now and um, yeah I'll be back with this I, I'll definitely get another part of it done tomorrow um, maybe even a couple will get started although I suppose it's going to take me a little time to get into the game get into the rules and that again uh, you know, I haven't went and refreshed myself by reading through the rules again, but I think that's maybe why if I use that flip book to start with and just go through that step by step, then hopefully I'll not make too many big bonders. But we shall see. I'm sure there'll be eyes out there watching me, for sure. <laughs> okay, cheers.